Let's bring in Kevin Frazier. He covers the entertainment world like nobody else for entertainment tonight. And uh, had red carpet last night, pre-show, post-show, parties. How are you, Kevin? Dan, I'm magical. You know, I mean, look, I, I was trained by you. I know how to I know how to go, go you know, long and strong and, and make it into work the next morning. Okay, who did you talk to last night that uh, maybe you got a little bit more than you thought? You know what? I, I'll tell you this. Talking to Glenn Weiss, who is the director of the Oscars, he told us a few secrets about what was going on with Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga's performance, right? And he said that Bradley directed the – he had a heavy hand in directing the performance. Because here's my thing. When Bradley and Lady Gaga performed Shallow, and at the very end, when they were looking in each other's eyes, they looked like they might kiss. I'm thinking, did he direct that moment, or is this real? Because Gaga looked like she just wanted to devour him. And meanwhile, just a few <laughs> feet away, his lady love, Irina Shayk, the model who looked stunning on the red carpet, was sitting in the front row. Now, she jumped up and gave a you know clap and a standing ovation, and someone said she deserved a Best um, Supporting Actress nom for be sitting between the two of them and acting like everything was cool. But I thought that that was fascinating that maybe Bradley directed that moment and they decided to do that close up with the two of them looking in their eyes. Um, that was my, that was one of my favorite moments. Spike was on fire on the red carpet. Boy, was he on fire. He was wearing those, um, those, those finger rings from do the right uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, those ones that said love and hate. He was just so hyped, and of course, he was so hyped that he jumped up on Samuel Jackson when he won his um, when he won his Oscar. Can I tell you who looked spectacular? Jennifer Lopez, that dress. Yeah, but that's I not mean, a shocker. I I don't think I would have gone with white if I was Alex Rodriguez. Well, look, I, I mean, Alex has had some interesting interesting outfits, okay? But he's the guy. When you are with Jennifer Lopez, you can take some fashion risks. Because half the time, people aren't looking at you. You know, this is one of the few times in his life where he's like an accessory. He's been the main guy all his life. And all of a sudden, he becomes the accessory. And she shows up in this dress that's all glass. And people are losing their minds. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, dude's with her. I mean, look, I love A-Rod. But he, he might have, you know, he's the accessory for the star. Um, Rami Malik fell off the stage last night. Yeah, so afterwards... You know, everybody's taking pictures. He's up on the stage. He falls off. He holds on to his Oscar. <laughs> but the paramedics come busting down there because they're like, oh, my goodness, we got to make sure you're OK. Beverly Hills Fine has come down and they check him out. And um, he was OK. They sat him down and he was OK. And he went to the governor's ball and, you know, afterwards kicked it at some parties. Because, look, I mean, it's like a player getting taken out of the biggest game of the year, you know. You fall, you hurt yourself, and you're like, Coach, I'm not coming out. There was no way in hell he was not going to go out and celebrate the moment of his life. And the, that's what he did. The best party, toughest party to get into? A Vanity Fair. Um, it was funny because, uh, without a doubt, Vanity Fair is the toughest party to get into. There are always private parties. I mean, my favorite private party was always Prince's Oscar party that he would have every year. He would perform. All the biggest stars would fight to get in. Be, it used to be Madonna's before that, but then it turned into Prince's. And I don't think anyone has one-upped that party because it was just magical. You would walk in the room, and every big star was there, and they were all like little children listening to Prince perform. It was the best party always of the evening. But um. There was, a, you know, there were a lot of people who, who go to Vanity Fair and a uh, few sports folks, uh, they snuck in last night. Uh, I'll leave you with this in the final 30 seconds. Could you take Mahershala Ali one-on-one? -on -one? Um, he still looks like he's in incredible shape. I think he would give it to me and you, so don't even fantasize. I know your jumper's nice, but he would, give, he would give it to both of us. And by the way, can I just say, I talked to Spike about Zion yeah. when he was there, and I asked him if he jinxed Zion, and he says, you know, you're the first person to ask. And I immediately went home and checked the back page of the New York Post the next day because I thought that they were going to make me the jinx. But he was like, Obama was there? Couldn't it be Obama jinx? <laughs> Get a nap, Kevin. Always great to talk to you. Dan, always great to talk to you. Uh, but I don't think you would score on Mahershala, by oh, the way. Oh, stop. Just let you know. Oh, stop. I don't know. You I don't know, Dan. Stop. Stop. Your, your yeah. la lack of sleep is affected. He might be drunk. Who knows? Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. You <laughs> <What> score! <laughs> 
I am watching, and, and you know, the, the Dan Ants were like, did you know that he was a college basketball player at St. Mary's? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, he's a role player. He got some run. Yeah, I'd like to shoot with him. You know, see if Fritzy can set that up. Bring him in. Got some run, a little bit. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.